Welcome to MDG friends, I'm Ryan. Let's do a Commander Deck Tech. This one is a shout out to Jorge, one of our awesome subscribers. He said, hey man, let's do Zedru the Great Hearted. I have a deck, I wanted to see what you guys come up with. In the description below, you can see his version of this deck as well as the Architect version of Zedru the Great Hearted. Let's jump into Zedru, folks. This one is a super janky, really weird deck build. Zedru the Great Hearted, we're calling this the God of Generosity. So, what does this incredibly insane thing do? All right, Zedru the Great Hearted, it is a four drop in red, white, blue, legendary creature, Minotaur, Monk. To two, four, all that is and all that important. At the beginning of your upcreep, upkeep, upcreep, upkeep, gain X life and draw X cards where X is the number of permanents you own that your opponents control. And for three in all three colors, target opponent gains control of target permanent you control. Now, here's the deal we're not making this build a one trick pony where it's like oh we're just trying to always give away stuff that really sucks for the opponent now we got plenty of that but we also have things that stabilize the board do does mass removal if and when we need it as well as just some very good draw mechanics and overall synergies that are going to win us the game even some alt win conditions so we're mainly going to be using this to utilize the draw mechanics and to try to give our opponents some really janky crappy stuff but it's not the only thing we're up to all right so let's talk about the packages all right we got the land package we got a few tutors the ones you would expect alt win condition some removal as well as mass removal a few draw pieces a combo piece which we're gonna really dive into because there's one card in here in particular which is thought lash that uh, it's rule changes make this so you have to play this very specifically we'll get into that in a little bit uh, we got control ramp few shenanigans and what I'm calling party favors you know stuff you want to give away here you go it's a party it's a said party what 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 all right so as usual if you are new to this channel please 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 subscribe we find that very important and also if you're a subscriber hit that like button put the comments in make the algorithm monster happy because it's so hungry okay all right let's do it folks let's jump into land now we are not doing any of the original duels in here so i mean by all means swap out a few of these if you want to run the really expensive dual lands the original gangster lands that have no downside to them however we are running some fetch lands we got arid maza to go fetch us some land we got command tower of course we're running three colors exotic orchard so we can grab colors of our opponent Fabled Passage, so we can crack and go grab a basic we need. Flooded Strain, another fetch. Uh, we're running the Shocklands of question, in question, in question. Uh, we got a few islands, five. Mountains, six. Mystical Monastery, we're running this specifically because it's given us the three colors we need. It does come in tapped, I don't like that, but I like it, it's groovy. All right, we got planes, we're running six of them. Prismatic Vista to go grab a basic land of our choosing. Now we're running the Raugrin Triome. I think I said that right. This is uh, great. It's the Triomes out of the Ikoria set. This one you can also cycle for three. But more importantly, we can tap it for all three colors we need. It does come in tapped. Reliquary Tower because we do have some good draw mechanics. Sacred Foundry, another shock land. Scalding Tarn, another fetch land. Seagate Restoration, the uh, flip modal card where we have a blue mana source that can come in untapped for three damage and or draw cards equal to the number of cards in your hand plus one. And then you have no maximum hand side for the rest of the game. All right, and then we have Spectator Seating, the one that comes in untapped if we have more than two opponents. Steam Vents, the Shock. Training Center, another one of those if you have more than uh, two opponents. All right, now we're into party favors. And before we get too much into this, for the land base, 
You know, you can, of course, swap out the fetch lands if you don't have them. There's all sorts of ways that you can uh, manipulate the land base. This is what we go with because these are very effective and efficient. And depending on the circumstances, I would have run the dual lands. But moving on. All right, party favors. So with our commander, whether he's on the battlefield or not, we have synergies and mechanics that are going to allow us to take garbage cards and give them to our opponents. Let's start with this one, which is super ridiculous. Aggressive mining for four, you can't play lands. Sacrifice a land, draw two cards, acti activate this ability only once each turn. This is just a terrible card that we would love to give away. All right, a crow and horse. We don't even have to worry about giving this because it's built into this card. It's got Defender, it's 4-drop 04. When a crow and a horse enters the battlefield, an opponent gains control of it. At the beginning of your upkeep, each opponent creates a 1-1 one, one white soldier creature token. All right, a very avaricious whew, dragon. It's a 4-4 four, four that actually isn't terrible. Um, it's got flying at the beginning of your draw step, draw an additional card. I mean, that's, that's okay, but... At the beginning of your end step, discard your hand. Boom. Oh, I like that. And we have some cards in R99 that don't allow 4-4 four, four, or anything over 3 power to untap during untap steps. So we, we got some serious shenanigans going on in this build. <laughs> it's really janky. All right, Bizarre Trader for 2-1-1. Tap target player gains control of target artifact creature or land you control. Now, this is great for a lot of things with the creatures. Unfortunately, you can't pass off an enchantment, and we do have a bunch of enchantments that suck for the opponent. All right, cultural exchange for six. It does cost six. I don't like that it's so expensive. However, it gets the job done. Choose any number of creatures target player controls. Choose the same number of creatures another target player controls. Those players exchange control of those creatures. So... This works a couple different ways. We can exchange some of our garbage to an opponent and then get whatever they have. However, if we don't have anything, we can use this as politics with our other opponents. We can say, hey, if I exchange your stuff with their stuff, uh, don't attack me for three turns or whatever, whatever. So uh, that is uh, a choice. All right, delayed shield. You got to be real careful how you play this. For four, enchantment. If you would be dealt damage, put that many delay counters on delaying shield instead. At the beginning of your upkeep, remove all delay counters from delaying shield. For each delay counter removed this way, you lose one life unless you pay two. So you can just off the rip pass this off, or you can play it, take a bunch of damage, and then pass it off, which is even better. So this one, depending on how you want to go about this this could be a swappable card depending delusions of mediocrity it's four when delusion of mediocrity comes into play you gain 10 life yep gain that 10 life then pass it off when delusions of mediocrity leaves play you lose 10 life boom shalakalak donate for three give us some of those mechanics target player gains control of target permanent you control for a mere three i like it Gold Knight Castigator for 449 Flying Haster. This thing is terrible. Although it does have a 49 body with haste. So you play this and hopefully pass this sucker off. If a source would deal damage to you, it deals double that damage to you instead. If a source would deal damage to Gold Knight Castigator, it deals double that damage to Gold Knight Castigator instead. Again, you play this. You hit somebody with it, it's tapped. Hopefully you have some shenanigans going on where you pass it off and then they can't use it again. Plus you're doing double damage. I mean, it's just, <laughs> this this thing is something. Grid monitor for four, it's a four, six. You can't play creatures. Play this, pass it off. Your opponent can't play creatures anymore. What, what? That's right, folks. Illusions of Grandeur for four, it's an enchantment with a cumulative upkeep of two. Whenever Illusions of Grandeur comes into play, gain 20 life. When Illusions of Grandeur leaves play, lose 20 life. Effects that prevent or redirect damage cannot be used to counter this loss of life. So you get that 20 life, pass this thing off, and depending on the circumstances of the play field, this could be a game winner for you, uh, especially if your opponent has less than 20 life. 
Boom shalaka laka. Men night. This is a great little 1-1 one, one drop that costs you nothing to drop it and then pass it off and swap with something that's groovy on the other side of the play field. Nine lives. This one is absolutely unequivocally hilarious in this build. Nine lives. It's a three drop enchantment with hex proof. If a source would deal damage to you, prevent that damage and put an incarnation counter on nine lives. When there are nine or more incarnation counters on nine lives, exile it. When nine lives leaves the battlefield, you lose the game. What? So you play this thing and then you pass it off. It is hilarious. Remember, it doesn't have shroud. It has hexproof. So they can't target it, but you can. So you just got to make sure that the somehow there isn't some mass removal spell um, which are usually sorceries. So just play this thing, get it off your play field and onto someone else's and you are in <laughs> excellent shape. This thing is absolutely hilarious. All right, perplexing Chimera. It's a five drop three, three enchantment creature. Chimera. Whenever an opponent casts a spell, you may exchange control of perplexing Chimera and those and that spell. If you do, you may choose new target for the spell. So this thing is very, very versatile in terms of like how you want to deal with grabbing stuff of your opponents. Puka's Mischief 4 Enchantment at the beginning of your upkeep, you may exchange control of target non-land permanent you control and target non-land permanent an opponent controls with an equal or lesser converted mana cost. Again, keeping that engine going where we're passing off garbage for stuff they have that we want. All right, we're almost done with the party favors here. Pyromancer Swath for three. If an instant or sorcery source you control would deal damage to a creature or player, it deals that much damage plus two to that creature or player instead. At the beginning of each end step, discard your hand. So this we don't want. We want to pass this off as quickly as possible. All right, Rust Elemental, another one we want to just pass off. It's a four drop, four, four. Uh, artifact creature in, in elemental blah, 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 blah. flying at the beginning of your upkeep sacrifice an artifact other than rust elemental if you can't tap rust elemental and you lose four life so we just assume this thing's going to keep staying on tap they keep losing four life or they're having to sacrifice think this thing is awesome all right talking about awesome here state craft for four prevent all combat damage that would be dealt to and dealt by creatures you control so that's fun I like it. Does that need any explanation? Any explanation at all? No, I really don't think so. Steel Golem, another one that needs no explanation. This is a three, three, four artifact golem. You can't play creature spells. Ha ha. Now this one is very funny. It's a uh, five drop seven, seven legend. It's pretty old. Uh, phasing trample at the beginning of your upkeep. All lands you control phase out. I can't help myself. I, I can't help it. It's just that funny. So you drop this and then you hopefully pass this off. And then all of their lands are unusable um, for their turn. It's just, it's, it's fantastic. Oh, this one is uh, really gross. It's a three white, white, white. You don't lose the game for having zero or less life. When you have 20 or more life, you lose the game. Whenever you lose life, you gain two life for each one life you've lost. So you play this thing and you pass it off immediately. Um, so it's this thing, this thing is ridiculous. Um, you gotta be careful when you play this because it's uh, when you have 20 or more life, you lose the game. So you need to play this when you don't have uh, more more than 19 life so you gotta be careful how you run this card but it is a definite doozy for your opponent all right vettelkin plotter for three whenever vettelkin plotter enters the battlefield exchange control of target land you control and target land and opponent controls so this is just more powerful stuff to get stuff we want uh and this can actually help mana screw your opponent depending on which land you grab or in a utility land etc 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 all right we are out of the party favors finally and we are into some tutors enlightened tutor mm, i don't like the list version i like mirage even though it looks exactly the same that one looks exactly the same all right search library for an artifact or enchantment put it on top of your library 
gamble, search your library for a card, put it in your hand, then discard a random card. I don't like the discarding part, but you know what? It only costs one red. And as long as you have a good filled up hand, you should be all right. Mystical Tutor, put it on top of your library for an instant or sorcery. All right, so we have a few combos going on in this deck, a few shenanigans where we're not relying on just Zedru's mechanics of passing off garbage uh, for the win. Jace, Wielder of Mysteries. This is if you would draw a card uh, while your library has no cards in it, you win the game instead. And then we, of course, have the plus one, which is target player puts the top two cards of their library into their graveyard draw card. Now, the way we're going to use this in this build is if we're going to plus one it, we're probably going to have them um, get rid of some cards so that we can draw. And um, the, the minus eight, eh, we're probably not even going to be using that. And now this combos up with this very nicely. Laboratory Mani uh, Maniac, it's a 3-2-2. If you would draw a card while your library has no cards in it, you win the game instead. Boom. So we like that. Now, this is the combo that we need to talk about a little bit. It's Thought Lash. It's two blue, blue, cumulative upkeep. Uh, remove the top card of your library from the game. If you do not, remove your library from the game and bury Thought Lash. Now, if we're comboed up with Jace, then we're gonna wanna keep this. If not, we are definitely gonna wanna pass this off. However, keep in mind, based off of the rules and the rule changes, you're gonna wanna have this passed off before your upkeep. Because if it is your upkeep, the way that it stacks on this, uh, the stack, the way that it stacks. Yeah, did that make sense? I think so. We're not even cutting that out. Uh, you would end up removing your entire library instead of theirs. So depending on the board state you have and if you have Jace out or not, will determine whether you keep this or whether you pass this off. Most likely, you're gonna wanna pass this thing off for the win. All right, Curse of uh, Opulence. Now, the reason I don't have this in the party favor section is because uh, it's more just like to goad your opponents into attacking someone else. Plus, we don't have to pass this off. Enchant Player. Whenever Enchanted Player is attacked, create a colorless artifact token named Gold. It has sacrificed this artifact. Add one mana of any color to your mana pool. Each opponent attacking that player does the same. So this is more about putting a target on one of your opponent's backs. Yeah, buddy. All right, more shenanigans. Uh, this really is just mainly because it didn't have a place in any of the other categories. It is in our colors of the commander. It's a flyer whenever you cast a non-creature spell, create a 1-1 white spirit creature token with flying, and you can sack spirit for add red. So we got ramp built into this. We got some tokens built into this. Uh, it's just an overall decent card for these colors. All right, Mirror Maid, it's a three drop. You may have Mirror Maid enter the battlefield as a copy of an artifact or enchantment on the battlefield. There you go. So we could copy something that's gross for your opponent and then pass Mirror Maid off, or we can just copy something that is gonna be useful for us, like uh, a mana rock or something like that. There you go. There you go, people. All right, Psychosis Crawler. In my opinion, uh, a completely swappable card if there's something else that you think should be in this build. But it's just a fun, nice, easy card to play. It's a five drop, not a fan of that. It should be a four. Psychosis Crawler's power and toughness are each equal to the number of cards in your hand. Whenever you draw a card, each opponent loses one life. So it's kind of vanilla. You can play it or swap it. Uh, I just have it in here, mainly as filler, and it's fun. All right, Sphere of Safety, it's a five drop. Creatures can't attack you or a Planeswalker you control unless their controller pays X for each of those creatures, where X is the number of enchantments you control. And you're gonna probably control a few enchantments, including itself. Remember, this one counts. All right, moving on. To Fairy Protection, need I say more? Protect all our stuff on the battlefield that is in our control, and you can't lose the game or lose life, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All right, Windborn Muse, it's a flyer two, three, four drop. Creatures can't attack you unless their controller pays two for each creature they control that's attacking you. All right, we got an alt win scenario here. Filled our Sovereign for six, four, six, Vigilance Lifelink. At the beginning of your upkeep, if you have 40 or more life, you win the game. 
win the game, people. You win the game. Consecrated Sphinx so that we could draw. We're not going to pass this one off. Flying, whenever an opponent draws a card, you may draw two cards. Yes. Yes, indeed. Ristic Study. I mean, who doesn't love Ristic Study that's playing blue? And who doesn't absolutely hate Ristic Study that's playing against you? Yes. Whenever an opponent casts a spell, you may draw a card unless they play pay one. All right, now we're into the ramp. We're going to blast through this. There's nothing really all that crazy going on here. Arcane Signet. Uh, the Signets in our colors. Signet, Signet. Chromatic Lantern because we're running three colors. Lands you control have tap it for any color we need. And you can also tap it for a color you need. Dockside Extortionist. Yes, love this thing. This gives you a treasure token for every X artifact's or enchantments your opponents control and since we're passing off a bunch of enchantments and artifacts possibly uh, we're gonna really be able to lever this bad boy hull breacher yeah this is a gross gross very fun card it's got flash an opponent would draw a card except the first one they draw each step you get to make a treasure token yeah buddy and remember you can pass off those tokens for bueno stuff they have if you so desire all right, Keeper of the Accord, four drop, three, four. We're probably not going to pass this thing off. It's nice, especially in Earl game. At the beginning of each uh, opponent's end step, if that player controls more creatures than you, create a 1-1 one, one white soldier creature token. At the beginning of each opponent's end step, if that player controls more lands than you, you may search your library for a basic planes card, put it on the battlefield tab, then shuffle your library. So if all of those mechanics are irrelevant because you're mid-game, late game, and it does make sense to pass this off for something better that they have, by all means, by all means. All right, Monologue Tax. This is new out of Commander 2021. Whenever an opponent casts their second spell each turn, you create a treasure token. Same thing goes for Smothering Tithe. If they don't pay two, you create a token that you can crack. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. Soul Ring. I mean, yeah, of course, Soul Ring. Now, this one, let's, let's pause for a moment now that we're in removal. I put this in here because it's hilarious. Armageddon, destroy all lands. Now, we have enough ramp going on and enough shenanigans that destroying all lands probably isn't going to hurt us as much as it's going to hurt everybody else. Now, if you're looking to not make friends, this is the card for that. Uh, if you're in a play group where this is going to be hilarious and pe people are going to slough it off and be like, eh, you son of a bitch, you son of a bitch, uh, then by all means, put this in here. If you're going to make a lot of hate for yourself and people are going to just get really mad at you, uh, maybe not play this, but you know what? Play it anyways, because it's flipping hilarious. All right, moving on. Chaos Warp. You know, I really don't like this version of the artwork. I like that better. The owner of Target Permanent shuffles it into his or her library, then reveals the top cards of his or her library. If it's a permanent card, he or she puts it on the battlefield. Now, we're running this because of spot removal. This is just so if we need some resets or stuff that we just really need to deal with. A lot of this removal is about that reset buttons because they've removed all of our shenanigans and we're just trying to get going again. Same thing with Cyclonic Rift. Be careful how you're playing this because it's return target non-land permanents you don't control to its owner's hands. So just be careful how you use this. This is a reset bus button for sure. Dark Steel Munitions Removal, this is great, all around great. So if you need to get rid of something super janky that they got going on, you can turn it into a zero one indestructible. If there's something going on your end that you need to make, like target uh, an artifact, just whatever you need to do, this thing is really versatile, whether or not you're targeting your opponent or if you need to target something of your own for some reason. Uh, it's very, very versatile and very cool. All right. Doom Scar. In case we need some re reset buttons. It is a Wrath of God for three if you foretell it. Not too shabby. Imprisoned in the moon for three. Enchant creature land or planeswalker. It becomes a regular old colorless mana source for them. So very, very awesome. Like I said, Wrath of God. Counterspell. Deflecting SWAT. If you control a commander, you may cast a spell without paying its mana cost. That's nice. But even for a mere three, it's still decent. You may choose new target for target spell or ability. You know, something that blue usually does, we now do in red. 
Fierce Guardianship, just have have to have a little bit of countering action in here. If you control a commander, you may cast this without paying. It's mana cost, counter target, non-creature spell. Ghostly Prison, we're into control. Yes, yes, yes. Of course, creatures can't attack you unless they're controller pays two for each creature attacking you. Then some mana drain, more counter stuff, counter target spell at the beginning of your next main phase. Add an amount of colors equal to that spell's converted mana cost. If you don't have these, this card and you don't have the budget for it, you can easily swap this out for a three drop counter spell of your choosing. There's plenty out there. Marble Titan, four drop, three, three. Creatures with power three or greater don't untap during their controller's untap step. Platinum Angel. We're probably going to keep this and not pass it. It's you can't lose the game and your opponents can't win the game. So we can keep setting our pieces in place and just hit them with attrition. All right. Pramicon Sky Rampart. I don't know why it's done this really funky version, but... Looks like that's the only choice we have. Flying Defender Wall for th in our colors. Each player may attack only the nearest opponent in the chosen direction and Planeswalkers controlled by that opponent. So this is more pillow stuff, more just ways of keeping opponents from getting to you while you set up all of your pieces. Propaganda, another way to keep them off your back. Creatures can't attack you unless their controller pays two for each creature that's uh, attacking you. All right, we got Venser Shaper Savant for 422 Flash. Whenever Venser Shaper Savant enters the battlefield, return target spell or permanent to its owner's hand. This is way more versatile than you probably realize. Uh, you can really help your board state um, by dealing with their stuff and if you need to bounce something of yours back. And that brings us to the end, folks. Zedru the Great Hearted. This is a very, very unique, very strange commander. Uh, it in this build it actually works really well not only with the draw mechanics that are going to be great for us to get through our deck but the fact that we can just really play with the board state and the battlefield grabbing things handing things off uh one turn kills uh combos just very fun very spicy thanks for tuning in put some comments in the comment section hey you made it to the very end make sure you put that in the comments so i know you're paying attention awesome check out our other stuff and thanks for tuning in